The data for the levels in the game are stored in these JSON files. And right now, if I want to add a level, I have to manually type out all these values. So I definitely need a faster and easier way to build up new levels. So what I want to do is create a simple level editor that will let me arrange terrain pieces, position the start and end points, and set up the item inventory. Then I could just press a button and it would generate the JSON file for me. So right now I'm working on a custom editor window. Here it is. So far it just has a few buttons that will spawn in different shaped terrain pieces. Now when I'm done arranging stuff, I can just press this button and it will generate the JSON data for the terrain pieces and the start and finish locations. Another thing it can do is take a level file, which is just a JSON file, and load that in. So then I can make additional edits and output the new JSON. This isn't all the data required for a level file, so what I'm doing now is just kind of copying and pasting it into a template that has the rest of the things the level needs. But this is fine for now. Just generating this terrain data already significantly cuts down the amount of work to build a level. So I'll keep adding stuff to the level editor, and once it can generate everything, then I could even switch away from JSON into some faster, smaller, uh, data storage format. One thing about the game that's really frustrating is that you can't move items together as a unit. For some items like wheels, if they're connected to a beam, then you move the beam, then they'll move with that. But two beams, they'll always just move separately. I think the easiest solution to this would be just if you're pressing the shift key, then it'll move everything that is connected. So now you can drag around a single object, just like normal. But if you shift click, then it highlights everything that's connected to it. And then you can just drag around all those objects together. If you connect them to other objects, then these will just stay highlighted so you can make adjustments like that. But if you shift click again, then it'll highlight the rest of the stuff. Rotating is kind of weird because it'll just rotate around the center of the last item you had selected. So maybe I should make it so that it rotates around the center of mass or something like that. You are about to see the largest update to the game so far. Are you ready? Boom! So basically, I'm rewriting the game. Well, not really rewriting, just sort of restructuring stuff. My goal is to make the code more modular 
and make better use of this component-based architecture that Unity is built around. And hopefully it'll make the game easier to expand upon, like adding new items, and easier to debug. So before, every item that you build with in the game was an actual c -sharp class, which basically controlled the game object representation in the scene. So a beam was a class that inherited from rectangle object, which inherited from the base build object class. And if I ever wanted to create a new item, I would have to make a new class for it. Some of the functionality for these items was in these classes, and then I'd have a bunch of single manager classes that would handle things like input and forming connections. And this made it difficult to add items with more specialized behavior, like motors, for example. Now, the prefabs for each item, well, there's only one item so far, but the prefabs will be made up of separate components that each handle specific functionality. So if the item can be rotated, you just add a rotate component. Or if the item should be able to form connections as a rectangle, then you just add this rectangle connector component. And if it shouldn't connect or it shouldn't rotate, then you just don't add those components to the prefab. I'm also using a relatively new feature of Unity, which is prefab variants. So I can have this base build object prefab and can add components that are common to all build objects, like toggling physics and resetting the positions. Then I can create a variant, like a beam, where I can add additional components or change the values. Then when the base prefab is updated, like a, another component is added, then it will automatically update all the variants. I'm also getting rid of most of the centralized manager scripts. One change I made is to how the input is handled. So I'm using the built-in Unity event system, which automatically handles input to the UI on the canvas, but now I'm also using it for all of the clicking and dragging in the scene. This has some immediate advantages. For example, it will automatically prevent clicks from passing through the UI and it will ensure that only one thing can be interacted with at a time. So before I had to have this scene input manager, which would monitor for clicks or touches, then do a ray cast to see which object would be hit first, and then handle the dragging or whatever. Now the dragging and selecting can all just be components of the individual objects, and they can just take care of their own input. While I'm rewriting stuff, I'm going to add some new uses of scriptable objects that can help eliminate dependencies. So I started using these scriptable object game events, which create a global event system that you can modify right in the Unity editor. This came from a Unite talk on using scriptable objects to improve game architecture. And it has a lot of great info, so I'll link that in the description for anyone interested. The talk was suggested to me by another game developer who usually goes by IO Exceptional. He recently started posting devlogs on his channel, so go check those out. I still have a little bit to do with uh, refactoring stuff, but hopefully by the next devlog, everything will be back to looking like it was.